Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. You are just one of tens of thousands of people around the world downloading this week's Growing in Grace program. Welcome aboard. Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski here. We appreciate the uh, input, the responses, the emails, the messages that we get. Thank you very much. We're glad that we can be here to encourage you. Joel Brzezinski, how are you this week? Doing well, doing well. Lots of downloads every week. It's exciting to hear from people and and know how the podcast is impacting you. Like you said, we love the emails. Um, It's just real simple sometimes, you know, just what a blessing the podcast is, or I've been really, really set free by the things that you guys talk about, you know, that that type of thing. And that's really what it's about. You know, we're, we're sharing this not for uh, obviously not for fortune. We make no money doing this and not for fame. We don't really care if people know it's us or not. But when somebody's life is touched because of God's gospel, it's not our go- It's not even our gospel. It's not even our grace that we're talking about. It's God's grace that we're talking about. And I believe God loves people to know about his love and his grace. And that's all we're doing, communicating a message of the true love and grace of God, and, and it's meant to set people free and make people free. So we're happy to be doing that. And I loved the uh, identity talk that we've done the last uh, couple weeks. I mean, just knowing who you are in Christ. You know, we've talked about how a lot of people are working to become something when God has actually already made you something. That goes back to his grace. The difference between what Christ came to do for us and what a lot of people believe is that I think a lot of people believe that Christ came and so now there's this standard of living that we're supposed to try to live up to and we're trying to reach that mark. We're trying to get there, whether it's progressively or through working harder or trying to change our behavior. And that's a lot of people's idea of what Christianity is, about what life in Christ is. And really, it's about how God has already given us all things. And we already are righteous. We already are holy. We're already justified. And we're living from that and not trying to attain it. And so it really helps when a person can understand that because then they can actually understand what this life is about, what their daily living is about. They're not trying to strive to become something. They're not striving and struggling and eking out this this um, good life for God. Rather, he has given you his good life, and that's your starting point. That's where you start from. And there's such a world of difference between how some people view life in Christ and what it's really about. It's all, you know, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like you get a, 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 a nice big piece of bacon and then you wrap a bunch of religion around it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and, and, you know, just, you got to get that religion out of there to really enjoy it, you see. And, and I was like that for a long time. I, I thought it was about me dedicating my life to God, not yet realizing at that time that it was God who has dedicated his life to me. He wasn't interested in my dedication. He wasn't interested in my life being dedicated to him, but he was interested in being able to provide real life, his life, eternal life, uh, and dedicating that to to me. And, And that's how it is, of course, for all people everywhere. And for those of us in Christ, there are still many Christian believers who just struggle with many of the things that I did for the first 20 years of my Christian life until I came across this this message of grace that the, the religious people like to call hyper, uh, way out of balance, right? Uh, they have no idea what they're talking about. Even some of the wisest people with letters behind their name and uh, Dr. Dot in front of it <laughs> uh, have no clue sometimes when it comes to understanding the good news grace of the gospel within a new and better covenant. There's always this mixture of the old stuff that Israel was under through the first covenant. Uh, they, they, t- they tend to blend that into the new covenant of Jesus Christ, and it just kind of brings a really inconsistent message that, that leaves people 
in a bit of a lurch when it comes to wondering where they stand with God. So I did, uh, like you, Joel, I appreciated the uh, identity talk that we've had here in recent weeks. But let, let's let's kind of just branch off of that just a little bit, because so many people out there are struggling with where they stand with God, and does God really love me? Am I really saved? I went through some of those moments. Just where am I at? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Remember the rich young ruler went up to Jesus. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Jesus gave him a list of rules to do from the old covenant, stone tablet commandments, and he thought he had pretty much kept those since his youth. Jesus knew better, didn't really rub it in his face, but said, okay, well, here's one more thing you can do related to those old covenant commandments. Jesus wasn't giving him anything new to do. Right. And he just said, sell everything you've got and give it away. Because if you really loved your neighbor as yourself, the way that you said you did, then that's what you would do. <laughs> so he walked away sad because he wasn't delivered the good news. Uh a lot has changed since the cross. Uh, most of it, well, pretty much all of the ministry of Jesus as he walked the earth was an old covenant ministry targeting Israelites who were under that stone tablet commandments, uh, those, those stone tablet commandments under that first covenant. Now we've got people today who are professing to believe in Jesus Christ, but struggle with so many things. Uh, one of those uh, that we were talking about briefly, Joel, uh, recently was the issue of forgiveness. So many people walk around wondering, am I forgiven? Is God okay with me? Am I okay with God? And they, they wrestle with that. And everybody seems to come up with, depending on what brand of religion that they sprung from, whatever Christian denomination it was, they, they all have their, um, their formulas, if you will, to try and, and get everything right so that they can know that they're forgiven. And a lot of different people will go through a lot of different things and jump through a lot of different hoops and, and jump over a lot of different hurdles to try to ensure themselves that God is okay with them and that whatever sins they've committed are, you know, washed away. Right. Yeah. And everyone has their own different ideas of, of what it's all about. And, and when the scriptures tell us very clearly that it's one sacrifice from Jesus, the offering of his body. That's one sacrifice for all sins, for all time, and it's really that simple. But many people do have their own ideas and their own additions and their own things that they think they need to do in order to be forgiven. And um, this, this actually came up in my Facebook memories today, and I had kind of forgotten about this conversation that I had with somebody three years ago, but it's a, a woman that I knew during my teenage years, and then a few years ago, we reconnected through work, and so we can talk, um, smack with each other, and, and that type of thing. And so, anyway, she was talking, <laughs> she was joking around about uh, the notion of there's this thing in Waterloo. We live in Waterloo, Iowa. Every year, there's this thing called Irish Fest. There's a lot of drinking going on, a lot of fun, a lot of partying, and she was joking about going to this, drinking a lot, and then going to mass at the big Catholic church that's right here in downtown Waterloo. And um, so anyway, I, she was joking around about that. And basically she was thinking that when she does that, when if she does something like that, she doesn't feel forgiven unless she, she goes through some sort of suffering for her sins. And I, I told her, I said, you know, uh, it's not so much about what's a sin. Is this a sin or is that a sin? But Paul said... All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Not all things edify, not all things are helpful. And so she looked at me and she said, so you're saying it's wrong to get drunk and go to mass. <laughs> and, and I said, that's it. Here, this is the thing. I said, I don't have to tell you, is what I told her. I don't have to tell you what's right or right or, or wrong. You are telling me by your response that you know what to do or not to do. I don't care what you do. You get to decide for yourself because all things are lawful for you. You can do what you want, and you know in your heart what's edifying and what's helpful and what's not. And then, so that's what led to her talking about her needing to feel forgiven based upon her own suffering or penance. So, whatever you think about drinking and, and, and getting drunk, no matter what you think, this conversation I had with her, I tried to move it to, that it's not about that so much as it's about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's about what he did for us. 
I said, there's no, she told me when I, when I said everything was accomplished through the blood of Jesus, she said, okay, I, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus, but, but that's not enough. It can't be that easy. She told me that's literally what she said. It can't be that easy. I told her there's no amount of suffering that can ever match what Jesus did. I told her about Hebrews and the one sacrifice for all sins for all time. But again, she said, it can't be that easy. And I jokingly, I said, you don't believe the Bible. And she's, and she said, she does believe the Bible. And I told her <laughs> if she believes the Bible, she would know that there's nothing she can do about her sin problem. So anyway, we were having fun with it, but I was also being serious because I wanted her to know that it's not her suffering. It's not her penance. It's the one offering of Jesus that took care of anything. But she kept adding all of these buts. But this, but that all these things that she's been taught over the years, she feels she needs to ask for forgiveness and feel a certain amount of suffering for her sins. And I told her again, Jesus suffered for her. He suffered for her. No amount of her own suffering or sacrifice could ever equal or add to what Jesus did freely for her. It's one sacrifice for all sins forever. So there's just one example of the things that people add to the gospel, the simple gospel of Jesus and his one sacrifice for all sins for all time, thinking that there's got to be something that they got to do. Um, and w- of course we can relate to that. Uh, now we've come a long way in the last 27 years in our growth and grace, but I can totally relate to that. I, you know, spent a lot of my time seeking a renewed forgiveness from God constantly and, you know, eventually you almost just get tired of doing it, sort of like, uh, hey, God, it's me again. And yes, I, I, I made another mistake again and again and again and again. And you try to cling to the idea that, well, if, if I just ask God to forgive me, he'll forgive me again. And you just keep trying to cling to that. But eventually it kind of starts to wear on you. And then you you kind of stop those confessions and, and just go on with life and sweep God under the rug for a while. And then you kind of come back again and try to rededicate again. It's this constant cycle that's taking place. So, But when you stop and think about it, imagine whether it was me 30 years ago, Joel, or whether it's somebody like who you were talking about, and probably most Christians. Imagine thinking that there's something you can do, <laughs> something <laughs> that you, some act that you can perform that is more effective than the blood of Jesus Christ, which was, by the way, only shed one time. Now, why do you think that was? Why do you, Sometimes we just need to think these things out. Why do you think under the Old Covenant there were all these sacrifices that were continuous and, and ongoing with the animals, uh, the animal blood, and yet Jesus came along as the Lamb of God, and he was only sacrificed once. He shed blood one time, once for all, And as the writer of Hebrews put it in in chapter 10, once forgiveness has come, there's no longer the need for another sacrifice. There's no offering needed anymore. And there's nothing that we can offer to God, including our own sorrow, our own confession, our own apologies. We can't offer God anything in order to secure that forgiveness. It's something that God did on our behalf, and we can contribute nothing to a finished work. (laughs) Yeah, imagine God saying, well, okay, the blood that Jesus shed was good, but wow, look what you did. Well, that, you know, I'm going to accept your <laughs> somebody else's uh, sacrifice for their own sins, right? Yeah, he's, he's not going to do that. It's the one sacrifice of Jesus that took care of all sins for all time. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.